You're listening to the Small and Supercharged podcast with Rhea Freeman, episode 171. Hi and welcome to another episode of the Small and Supercharged podcast. It's a solo with yours truly. And today is talking about where should you be? Where should you be? I'm going to stick to social media. If you're like me and you're, well, we'll be, the kids will be back to school when this comes out. I'm recording it before they're back to school and I barely know what day it is. Um, but it's all good. So I'm never quite sure where I should be. But next week things get better. But today I'm not talking about where you should be. Actually, you need to check your calendar, your diary for that. Um, I'm going to talk about where you should be online because it can be so overwhelming when there are just so many places you could be. You could be everywhere. You could be on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Snapchat, TikTok, um, Clubhouse. Where have I missed? I've missed loads of them. That's the point. There are so many places to be. And it's overwhelming. Let's be honest. If you are a one-man band, even if you're not a one-man band, even if you have somebody that helps you with your social media... It is overwhelming to think about all the places they should be, or could be, could be is the key word actually. And more than that, if you spent all your time on all the social media platforms, you wouldn't have enough time to run your brand or business or have much of a life. There are loads of hacks you can do to help, absolutely loads that you can do to to help you be on the places that you need to be. But I really wanted to come on today because I had a few weeks ago I was doing a I was doing a webinar again and someone asked about this because it's overwhelming. When you start out and you can pick anywhere, it's overwhelming. When new platforms join and you're not sure whether or not you should be on them, also overwhelming. That's if there's probably a word to sum up how social media can be, it's that. But I want to say to you today that whilst there are loads of opportunities and you should absolutely be taking the right ones for you, you shouldn't be taking all of them because otherwise you're just going to feel like you're not progressing. There's a really good quote. I feel like it's a Rachel Hollis one. I'm going to butcher it because I can't remember it word for word. But there's this thing about there's a line of 10 footballs and you kick each one once, you progress a small way up the field. If you kick one 10 times, you progress much further. And I think with social media, I think that's one way to look at it. Another way that I like to look at it is plate spinning. Not that I've ever spun a plate. I imagine it would be incredibly tricky. I can barely spin a hula hoop around my middle. That's that's a whole different story. Um But with plate spinning, from what I understand of plate spinning, which is again slightly limited, but I believe you get the first plate going first and you really make sure that plate's going well before you start your next plate. And then you make sure the the second plate's going well and you keep an eye on your first plate and you just keep that ticking over so it keeps spinning and it's doing a good job. Then you get up your third plate. If you're listening to this and you are a plate spinner, and I have got this wrong or right, actually, I'd love to hear from you. Screenshot, share to stories, tag me. Have I got the right idea of plate spinning? If not, apologies. But you see where I'm going with this. Each of the platforms out there has got its own nuances, how stuff works, what doesn't work, what does work. And if you're trying to learn all of this and do a good job of it all the time, you're likely to become so overwhelmed with it, you're just going to stop. And I don't want that for you. So... Today we're going to talk about where you should be and I hope that what I'm going to just chat through today will help you to have more of a direction, where to know where you need to focus, even if it's a case that you have got, you have got uh, different social media accounts across different platforms, at least hopefully you will have a better idea of where needs to be your focus rather than trying to divide this focus equally. What's the first thing you need to do? Now I'm going to use brand here instead of business because this works whether you are an influencer, whether you are a brand, it works if you're just a user of social media. But I'm using brand because if you're an influencer, if you're wanting to be an influencer, you want to grow your personal brand. If you're a business, you want to grow your brand. So I think it's the best word. So if you like, every time I say the word brand, feel free to just shout a different word out. That's completely fine. So first of all, think about your brand. 
you know your brand, you know your brand better than anyone else. And think about your audience. What age are your audience? Are they more male or female? What are their passions? Where do they hang out? What things do they really like? What channels, what platforms do you know they hang out in? If you don't know the answer, ask them. Put together a simple survey. There are lots of free survey tools online you can use or even just like a simple poll on a Facebook page or a simple poll on an Instagram story. Um, obviously keep in mind that if you put a poll on an Instagram story and you say, do you use Instagram? You should get 100% yes because they wouldn't have seen it otherwise. So there is that as well. But useful for finding out where else they are. You know, what do you think of X platform? How often do you go on these platforms? You could even, if you wanted to, particularly if you are a business here, get a little Facebook group together, put up a little questionnaire. You know, when people go through a certain section of your website, send a thing to your, send an email to your mailing list and ask them where they like to spend their time, where do they like to hang out the most. Um, do that research because it is important to know where your people are. Now, it might be that you're looking to expand into different places or you want to test different things. Absolutely, completely fine. But I think it's important that even when we're looking to do different things and move into different spaces, we don't neglect our current audience and where they are. Now, I think looking across all the different social media platforms, there is there are two that I always recommend. And that's just because of the sheer numbers involved and the demographic based on who I tend to work with. And that is, in all honesty, it's Facebook and Instagram because both are absolute beasts. Facebook has over 2.8 billion monthly active users. That was at the end of 2020. All of these figures, if you head over to your favourite search engine and type in the word and demographic or information, there's a, a really cool place called the Omnicore Agency, which has got lots of this information, which is really easy to consume and really, really useful. But, you know, do the research too, because it is important. So with Inst with Facebook, sorry, let's start Facebook. There's a huge amount of people that use Facebook. I mean, 2.8 billion at the end of 2020. Um, so I have just Googled this information. So feel free to do that. I've just Googled how many people are in the world. And according to my friend Google, who knows everything, um, it reckons 7.9 billion people are on the planet, um, which is significant, clearly. But also, if you look at how many people use Facebook each month, that's significant too. And if you can do percentages, go you. It's a big percentage. If you think about the whole world, it's really significant. More than that, if you dig down to the figures, you can look at the biggest age group, which is often... Um, is an age group a lot of my clients work with and more than that even the second largest age group is still very significant due to the numbers involved that's the thing it is a numbers game all of this is because you want to make sure you're getting your content yourself out to more people who are interested in what you've got to say that's kind of the whole game so most people I recommend Facebook to I'll be really honest with you. And most people I recommend Instagram to. I mean, it also probably helps that they are places that I, I spend most of my time and I know more about. And I think that a lot of the products, like the advertising products connected to it um, and the different functionality inside it is vast. I, I think they're pretty safe bets. Instagram has got over a billion monthly active users. And again, when you dig into it again, you can look at the, the demographics, the male and female split, all the things that are really important. But also just by studying your audience, you'll see where they hang out. Now, a lot of people in the equestrian and rural space spend time on these platforms. That doesn't mean they don't spend them anywhere else, but a lot of people do spend them here. That doesn't mean you should discount any other platform. And there are various different equestrians, country, um, and rural businesses that have actually got really good presence on different platforms as well. But this, the whole point of this is to allow you to take a step back and go, right, where are my people? Where are the majority of my people? Where are the biggest numbers of my people 
who might be interested in what I want to share, what I've got to sell, what I've got to say, because that's where your priority should be. So most people, I think Facebook and Instagram is a solid bet because of the numbers, because of the numbers involved and, um, and because of how people in our space use social media. But you don't need to stop there. And there are lots of other platforms. So if you are a B, I'm going to call it B2B, which is a very common phrase. It's not mine. It means business to business. So if you are listening to this and you are a business and you pitch to other businesses and brands, LinkedIn could be a really solid option for you. The numbers are lower than those two platforms, the, the, you know, the two we talked about. But in terms of it being your target audience, obviously, when we look at all the platforms, we have to accept that even businesses have people behind them. So we're still talking to people. But on LinkedIn, it's slightly different because you're not really sharing necessarily what you had for lunch, what a nice walk, walk you went on at lunchtime. But you're sharing more business things, more commercial things, um, what you've done in your business. Whereas on the other platforms, we would mix that more, more in generally with more lifestyle stuff so it doesn't feel as salesy somehow. So LinkedIn is definitely, I think, the most professional platform. Um, another really great use for LinkedIn is if you are looking for a job, um, well, not necessarily if you're looking for a job, but most, a lot of, well, over 700 million professional people have LinkedIn platforms. And these are people, it's varied. I'm on LinkedIn, really like LinkedIn. Come and come check me out. Um, I find it really interesting because I get to see content from people I follow on a business level about what they're up to in their businesses. Um, maybe things they've won, um, accolades they've achieved, big news from their businesses. I really like it from that point of view. Um, I think LinkedIn is is actually quite underrated. Um, I've had some really good success with LinkedIn when I've used it properly, and I, I do try and use it properly now. I didn't for years, didn't use it properly for years, but I've really started to kind of grasp that, and I found it very useful for that kind of thing, for very commercial, very, very professional connections. I think LinkedIn is really great. Another one that a lot of people um, used to be used to be, the, I, not, not the place to be, but the, when I've been looking at it, the figures are slightly different for Twitter and they're recorded as daily users. So it, it's not fair to, com, to compare like for like. But what I found with Twitter is that some sectors of, of our industry, equestrian and rural industry, really do use Twitter. Um, also broader than that. So Twitter is a really good place for, for journalists. There's a hashtag journal request, which is really handy. You can find out people are looking for people to contribute to features there. Um, so some spaces, news is very big on Twitter as well because it's very fast move, moving. Some spaces have got um, a lot more active on Twitter. So if you are in one of those spaces, Twitter could be a really good place for you. Again, look at those numbers, it's important. Moving through to other ones like good old TikTok. TikTok, it, TikTok, TikTok is, gosh, I can't speak. TikTok is growing really, really quickly. Um, it's great, particularly with younger people. Again, look at this, look at these demographics. A lot of people use it each month, each day. I'm slightly addicted to TikTok as a user, not so much a, a poster, but as a user. Um, and the type of content there is also really important. So if you really like doing short, snappy video content, you're probably going to move more towards Reels and TikTok because that's the kind of content that performs well there. If you're after a younger demographic, again, this could be why TikTok might appeal to you more than something else. Pinterest is another one that I've been asked about more and more. And again, with specific areas, it does really, really well, like interiors, inspiration, design, fashion, hair, things like that does really, really well. There are other people it does incredibly well for too because it's a really useful place to link back to other content. So a bit like a search engine. It's really useful for that. 
people do seem to be like either really like die hard Pinterest fans or not so much. But if your audience, your target audience are made up of many die hard Pinterest fans, it's a good place to be. It's got really good user numbers. What's quite interesting is the users are generally slightly older um, than other platforms. But again, if your target audience is slightly older, it could be a really good place for you to consider. And the last one I'm going to mention today, not because this is the only one out there, but because um, I think it's one that we can't not mention due to the sheer size of it, is YouTube. So if you enjoy, if you like your, your content style to be long form video, although they have now started doing short videos too, shorts, then YouTube is an obvious, is an obvious place for you to be. Things like Facebook for video, um, as in putting Facebook, putting video on Facebook, um, IGTV, another really strong option. YouTube would be another great option because it's a great place to keep that content and also get subscribers and have your content pushed out to those people. But then this is this long form video, or at least, you know, it's not a static image. So whilst it's important to consider your demographic, it's also important to, to consider your content type. Because even if your perfect demographic are hanging out on YouTube, for example, but you hate anything to do with video, though if that's the case, please reconsider because it's really important to get on board with video, it really is. Um, but then YouTube would probably not at this second be a great fit for you because you're not producing the kind of content that works on the platform. So in terms of where you should be, just to recap, think about your business you know your business, you know what you need to do or your brand. I said I was going to use them interchangeably. I have not done that. Um, you know your brand. Think about your brand. Think about your people, your customers and who you would like to appeal to. Think about their ages, their likes, their passions, where they hang out. If you're not sure, ask them. Focus groups, things like that. Ask them where they hang out, what their favourite social media platforms are. Get that information, it's going to be really, really valuable. Research the demographics of the different social media platforms. Have a go onto your favourite search engine, have a look. Um, there are the stats for all of them are widely available. They can give you often that you get a breakdown of actually the percentage of each age range. Really useful and just helps to inform you. I think as well when you realise even how the smallest platforms are still flipping huge, that's very encouraging as well. So have a think about that. Think about the content type that you personally enjoy producing and you're good at producing and you like producing because that is also going to have a bearing on which ones you focus on at this moment. It doesn't mean it won't change, but at this moment, that would be a great place for you to focus on. And think about why, why you're using it as well. Are you selling products? Are you selling services? How can you impart that information through the different platforms and what works the best for you. It doesn't mean that if you go, right, I'm gonna definitely use this platform here, that you can never use any other platforms at all. Doesn't mean that at all. But it might be good to think about it in terms of, right, where am I focusing first? It doesn't mean everything else is kind of dead to you. It just means that you're focusing on one at a time and getting really good at that and really understanding how that works before you move on to the next one because otherwise you're just going to become overwhelmed and the likelihood is you'll just throw in the towel altogether, drop the ball, then be really cross at yourself but it, was, it wasn't your fault. You kind of set yourself up badly to start with in terms of you didn't give yourself the best chance of success. So I hope that's helped. If you listen, as always, please do screenshot, please share to stories, please tag me. Let me know your favourite. I would love to know whether where you like to spend most of your time. And of course, if you need any further information on any of the stuff we've talked about today, or the kind of content that works really well on each platform, or anything like that, you need to head over to the Small and Supercharged Mastermind group. That This is my membership group. Nip over to riafreemanpr.co.uk and select Small and Supercharged Mastermind from the menu and you'll find out all about it. We had a really awesome, um, we do a really awesome 
mindset masterclass each month. We also have marketing masterclasses, live Q and A's each week, all sorts of trainings, opportunities, loads of stuff goes on in Mastermind. But we had a really, really cool mindset masterclass last week with Jane Pike, which has still got me smiling. So it's definitely a great place to be if you want to grow your brand or business with a fab community of other small business owners. Thanks so much for listening today. And if you have five minutes, well, not even five minutes, if you have a minute, 30 seconds, it would be awesome for you to subscribe and also for you to leave a nice review for me. I do look at them and they do always make me smile on whichever platform you listen to. If you do, let me know and I will keep my eye open for it and I will screenshot and share when that comes online. Thank you so much for joining me today. Have a brilliant day and we'll catch up really soon. Take care.